Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT surgeon that works for the NHS in central London. I'm the head of the sleep surgery department at the Royal National ENT Hospital. Now today I want to tell you all about positional obstructive sleep apnea. Now this is actually pretty easy to understand and a lot of people out there will know what this is. It's when you snore or you have worse sleep apnea or you stop breathing when you're lying on your back, but you're a lot better when you're sleeping on your side. Now people with this positional obstructive sleep apnea problem have very variable quality when it comes to their night's sleep. Sometimes in the morning they wake up feeling fantastic. They're like they've had a great night's sleep, but sometimes they wake up feeling like they haven't slept at all and they feel dreadfully tired, worse than when they went to bed. Now the reason for this is because their sleep apnea is dependent on their position that night. So for example, some people when they sleep on their back may have a severe obstructive sleep apnea, say an AHI of 32. That means they stop breathing 32 times every hour. But if they sleep on their side, however, everything seems to get better and AHI drops down to a normal level and they can breathe freely and they have no problems. So if they spend the whole night sleeping on their back, they wake up feeling dreadful. But if they happen to, for whatever reason, sleep on their side the whole night, they wake up feeling great because they've slept normally. And this is also the reason why some people, when they have a sleep study, they, they get very unusual results sometimes. They go, I feel dreadful. How can my sleep study be completely normal? And it's because on the night of their sleep study, they slept on their side the whole time and they had a great night's sleep, but their average is that they normally sleep on their back or they, they have a 50-50 split. And if they did have a 50-50 split, you'd pick up the sleep apnea. And I guess the opposite is, is also true. Some people who sleep very little on their back may sleep a lot on their back on the night of the sleep study and they look artificially high. And because of this, positional sleep apnea seems to really mess up a lot of our results and you have to really look out for it. And if you look at my uh, video on sleep study or how to interpret your own sleep study, you'll learn a little bit more about this. So I guess the next question is why do people get positional obstructive sleep apnea? And the way I think about it is that if you're lying on your back and something gets worse and when you're lying inside it gets better, well, what is it on your back that changes? It must be gravity dropping something back in front of the airway. And the only thing that's in front of the airway is your tongue. So you lie on your back, your tongue can just fall right back in that rather unattractive way that men sleep like like this. And it's actually their tongue. Well, it's not always the tongue, but an awful lot of time in position of such sleep apnea, it's the tongue that's falling back and blocking the airway. And when they roll on their side, their jaw hangs out, falls forward, and the tongue falls away from the back of the throat, allowing them to breathe. That's why you can be very, very severe on your back, but much, much better when you're lying on your side. Now, as I said before, it doesn't always work that way. It's not always the tongue base that causes a problem when you have positional obstructive sleep apnea. And the only way to really tell is to do a drug-induced sleep endoscopy. And again, there's a number of other videos you can look at on my channel about drug-induced sleep endoscopy, which is basically when I'm giving you a bit of sedation, you fall asleep in front of me, and then I can look with a telescope down the back of your throat while Whilst you're snoring away in front of me so I can see what's going on at the back of your throat. I can videotape it and then show you what's going on inside your throat whilst you're sleeping. And that's the way I use to diagnose people where the problem is in the back of their throat. And as I said, in positional sleep apnea patients, it tends to be the tongue. As it's not always, but the, the majority of people have a tongue-based problem because their tongue falls back. So the next question is, what can you do about positional obstructive sleep apnea? And we've termed this uh, positional therapy, which is a very grand way uh, of saying that you just roll someone over at night. This is what wives have been doing for years. But there, there are slightly better techniques than that. You don't have to uh, employ a sleep deprived woman to, to roll you over every night to, to keep you breathing at night. There are things you can do to train yourself to sleep on your side. And typically it takes about four to six weeks to train yourself to sleep on your side in the sort of fetal ball sort of position so that you find it more comfortable sleeping on your side than sleeping on your back. But for me to explain this to you, I need to be dressed appropriately, something befitting the head of the sleep surgery department in one of the largest sleep centers in the whole of Europe. So here we go. <laughs> that was so TikTok. When you're lying on your back, your pillow can be quite thin, but when you're lying on your side, a thin pillow will cause neck pain and also the lower arm to feel dead. So you often have to double up your pillow so you can sleep comfortably on your side. Remember, you need to position yourself so that your tongue and your jaw falls forward with gravity so that you can breathe normally at night. It often helps to use a pillow behind you to stop you from inadvertently sleeping on your back. It takes about four to six weeks for people to learn to sleep on their side rather than their back. So all of that's very good and some people would learn how to sleep on their side without it any extra help. Some people do need extra help. Some people do need a device to help them sleep on their side at night. And so what I did was I picked up a whole bunch of uh, devices off the internet and I tried them all out. And, and just when I picked the one I thought was the best, I actually got a call from the company that sent it to me and said, look, we can give you one of these for free. And so 
happy to receive this from a company called Woody Nose, which is the one I thought was best anyway. They gave me this device for free. They're not sponsoring this video. And so what I want to do is give the spare one I have away. And if you watch at the end of this video, I'll explain how you can get this spare one for free. So when you open the packaging, this backpack comes as a sort of very much a collapsible type backpack here. Uh, and you also get this sort of inflatable liner. Uh, this is actually pretty good quality. And you can blow it up quite easily. I'll probably speed this bit up, but just so you see. So it gets pretty big. And the good thing is that you don't have to keep holding the end. Uh, if you press this button in the side here, it just deflates out again. My advice is to inflate this thing whilst it's in the backpack, obviously. So you put it in the backpack in there like that, and then you blow it up and then just zip it up like that. And it works quite well. It's really, really comfortable, very soft. And it's not particularly tight like a rucksack's meant to be. It's just meant to be comfortable. And you can wear it quite loosely on you so it doesn't sort of sweat behind your back either. And what I'll do is I'll use some of that TikTok magic to get me back into my pajamas again. <laughs> As you can see, when I'm wearing the Woody Nose positional device, I simply can't sleep on my back at all. So as I said before, there were other positional devices that you can buy off the internet. In the end, I thought this was the best because even sewing in tennis balls into your pajamas, all that happens is that you wake up in the morning with a very sore sort of tennis ball sized bruise on your back. Uh, it doesn't stop you from sleeping on your back. And although it looks ridiculous to have a huge backpack, you're only really wearing this for the next four to six weeks to train yourself to sleep on your side. I'm sure there are other good devices out there on the internet, which I haven't managed to find myself, but all you need to do is just make sure it's quite big and it doesn't stop you from sort of sleeping on your back at all. Sleeping on your sort of three quarters is not good enough. It really has to be forward so that your tongue and your jaw roll forward and come out the way so you can breathe behind there. If you think to yourself about the recovery position where you're sort of sleeping a bit like this, and, and I'll think, see if I can find a picture of it or a link in the description about what the recovery position looks like. We use that in medicine to help people breathe. So they lie like this and their jaw and their tongue fall forward so they can breathe better when they're sort of partially unconscious. That's a position we really want you to be in. So to stop your tongue from falling back and blocking your breathing. Now, there are other electronic devices out there like the night balance device, and we have one of these on the NHS to give away to patients so they can teach themselves to sleep on their side. Uh, I think that's a bit much for this video, so I'll do a separate video about the electronic devices, uh, electronic positional devices in another video. But thank you very much to Woody Nose that gave me this device for free. It's very kind of you. Again, like, as I said, I'm not uh, sponsored by them at all, but uh, there is a link in the description if you'd like to use that affiliate link to buy it from Amazon or, or somewhere, wherever you like. Uh, oh, and I almost forgot, if you want to get the one that I didn't actually use, uh, I didn't open, is that I'm starting up a newsletter. So the reason why I'm starting a newsletter is I find in these videos I don't get to give you enough information and a lot of the information can be a little bit boring like all the research papers and things like that, but give you a little bit more information that I can't really say in these, in these short videos because the YouTube algorithm won't let me. So as I said before, uh, do try and buy one of these devices if you feel like sleeping on your side would be the best thing for you or you've been given a diagnosis of positional obstructive sleep apnea. Because sleeping on your side is the easiest low impact way of reducing your sleep apnea from that very high level down to the low level. But uh, I'll stop jabbering on now. Thank you very much for watching this video. Do take care. Bye bye.